Ciao Juventino of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well, it's Tuesday, we still have a few days to start analyzing Lazio Juve, match day 30 that will be played this weekend, so today we'll speak about other things, like for example, transfer market, but not just the repetition of what are the names linked to Juve, but the strategy that I'm reading on papers, that is quite intelligent, how can you reach these players, because we know it, let's not lie, there will be some players that will be sacrificed, and we are speaking about the youth, to reach some potential big players or important players that Juventus wants to sign to reinforce their team for 24-25. So all of this in today's video, of course, I'm asking you kindly to continue to support the channel by commenting, liking the video, subscribing to the channel, sharing the channel with your friends. We know it, we are that close to 29, so if we can do it, that would be just fantastic. And when I'm telling you comment, 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 because I love to read you, I love to read you. Whatever opinion you have, I really love to take time during the day to read a bit of your comments. And yesterday I asked you, Easter egg, what would you love to find that Easter egg for the remaining part of the season? I picked four comments that were quite nice, quite funny. The first one was from Mario that wrote a Coppa Italia, perhaps. Well, well, look, Mario, of course, I would love the same as you, a beautiful Coppa Italia. Why? Because after two years where Juventus didn't lift any trophies, would be time, would be great, would be fantastic to end the season with a trophy. So I totally agree with that one. A funny one from Rico the Unknown that wrote in the Easter egg, I want Simone Paroin to jump out in his fully Juve kit, ready to play at the weekend. Well, that first part could even be possible. Why? Because he's in our technical staff, so seeing him out of that uh, Easter egg, why not? It could potentially be. On the other side, seeing him playing in the weekend well i don't believe that will be feasible even if the lucky charm padawin on the field would not be that bad as an idea for the people that are asking who is rico the unknown because i already heard the name well yesterday a lot of you or the people that watched the entirety of the video they all wrote a lot of you wrote hey Beppe, it was really nice to have that outro song back again well if you want to hear the full music the full outro music of yesterday of Juve Storia di un grande amore in a cover way we go back to the channel to the channel of Rico Franchi and you can find the link uh, I believe I will put it at the end of the video so that you can immediately after the video click on it and you will be redirected because it's just a fantastic beautiful song Matthew in the Easter egg I would want a ticket for a Juve game and that was really beautiful that was really touching you know sometimes we don't realize how many of us are loving that much Juve but never had the opportunity to go to the Allianz Stadium, never had the opportunity to watch a Juve game live. And whatever the moment, that fantastic moment, difficult moment, one of the biggest dreams of every single Juventino of Earth is going there to support a team, to watch our idols on the field. So hopefully, Matthew, you can have one of the tickets uh, for the remaining part of the season, if not for the coming seasons. I would love to. And when you do, please let me know because I want some pictures. And then the fourth comment, the last one before entering that Mercato session, the one of Rafal, Rafal Thomas, that I really liked his comment because it's actually two parts, two, two things that he wanted. The first one, he wanted the Scudetto 05 06 back and then he said shut up dreaming is free look on that comment um has been already officially decided that this uh, scudetti will not be given back to juve the only strange thing that i see is that no journalist no serious paper when they are speaking about that 20th Scudetto for Inter, that second star of Inter, are rising the fact that one of them were just given to them. Uh, you know, like a 20th Scudetto with an asterisk or asking, you know, an article, just one article writing, is it really the 20th Scudetto? Would be fun. But no, the papers are absolutely not speaking about it. They are just totally omitting the fact that one of them was absolutely not won on the field. Anyway... Inside the egg, I want a bit of maturity and humility for Chiesa, a bit of self-reflection, less blaming others and moaning, more gritting his teeth and working harder. So that's a lot that you're asking to Federico Chiesa. We already spoke about Chiesa, in, uh, especially yesterday, who I would love to start between Chiesa and Yildiz. If you didn't watch the video, go back and watch it. Thank you for all your comments. They were really nice. Now, this weekend, I told you, not only... Juve will play against Lazio, which is super incredibly important. But there are some other games that are important for that fourth spot, for that top four, for that qualification of Champions League. One of them is Napoli-Atalanta. Napoli, Napoli, the last chances to really believe that they can do it with a remontada, hoping in that fifth spot for Champions League. Atalanta is also there 
also playing for that fifth spot. So it will be a big one to understand. A draw would be just fantastic. Another game that we have to monitor is Fiorentina Milan. Not that Fiorentina has that much uh, chances, but uh, Milan, you know, dropping points against Fiorentina would be lovely, especially because they have a lot of problems in their defense. Bologna against Sarenitana. Sarenitana is a really tough, difficult moment, so I believe that Bologna will push and win again the three points, and that's why we need to be alert. We need to win against the team of Tudor. We don't have Vlahovic, which is extremely bad news. The good news, that is, after his low back pain, he was training again with the team with one objective in mind, actually making sure that he excuses himself for that stupid red card that he received in the last game so that he can be a starter in Coppa Italia. Now, Corriere dello Sport, and now we are entering really that Mercato session. I was happy this morning. I was really happy this morning when I saw Zaniolo in big with the Aston Villa shirt and the Italian flag when he said, ridatemi la Serie A, give me back Serie A, exclusive interview that I didn't read completely, also because I don't have a subscription to Carriere dello Sport. But we were speaking about uh, Zagnolo and uh, the names of the team that could pot potentially be interested in Zagnolo are Milan and Fiorentina. He will never go to Lazio because he has uh, Roma in his heart, but I was happy that I didn't read the name of Juventus. We, at a certain moment, we need to move on. Basta. Think about other names. Zagnolo had multiple chances in Serie A, abroad, whatever. There is always something. That's true. A lot of more maturity. But still, it's a player that I would love to not have anymore linked to Juventus, which would be already a step ahead in a new Juventus, the Juventus of Giuntoli. And that's why I love to read the names on Tutto Sport. Ferguson, solo Juve. Ferguson, only Juve. In Italy, there is the confirmation that the Bianconeri, they want to be really extremely serious on the midfielder of Bologna. And that's one name. And then you have another name. It is Cope Manners. Ferguson on one side, Cope Manners on the other side. I know that I have been a bit unpopular on the name of Cope Manners, that by the way is injured with the Netherlands team. He will go back, he will not play that second game, uh, if I'm not wrong, against Germany. But Cope Manners is a player that I really like, that I really, is really great. But I do not want him at Juventus for 60 million euro. That price is out of this world. It is impossible for Juventus to sign him, to put all the budget that we have at disposal on one single player. So for me, it's a big no for that amount. Then if you tell me, uh, Cope Manners, you can sign him for 35 million euro, why not? Then I would be extremely happy. But for 60, even 50 million euro, way too much. Especially when I see that Gazzetta del Sport today, they go towards you want Cope? Well, the key is Dean Huysen. I already spoke here on about the channel about a Dean Huysen that I don't see in a really long time, in a really long period at Juventus. Why? Because of the choices of his career, because the player is ambition. The only choice that we have to keep Dean Huysen is being him a starter. Is he ready or not? That's a big question mark that I don't know. I don't even know if we will play with three or four, but I would love to keep Dean Huysen. I don't want to put Dean Huysen at Atalanta. Atalanta is interested in the Spanish player, we have to say now. But not for Cope Manners, not to decrease the price of Cope Manners. What is the value of Dean Huysen? Or what do they want to pay for him? 25, 30 million euro with Juventus still having to spend money on Cope Manners for the other parts so of 30 million euro, which according to me would be extremely too much. So sacrificing a Dean Huysen for a Cope Manners, absolutely not. That's according to me a no-go. Then I really appreciate the other strategies, the other strategies that, according to me, are correct. Look, we spoke a lot about Mattia Soule on today's, uh, on, in this channel, about him doing a fantastic, beautiful season with Frosinone. I always told you, pay attention, because there was one that is not on the front pages, but that is equally doing a beautiful season and grew so much this season. It is Barrenecea. Barrenecea that was loaned out and a lot of, not a lot of people were thinking that he would have matured that much, having that important role at Frosinone. But he's a player that is monitored by Valencia, 
by Girona, but especially also in Italy by Genoa. Genoa, where we did already a lot of deals with, for example, Rovella in the past, or the winter, the winter that we know, one more game, one single second on the field with Genoa, and they are obliged to sign him. So there is a really beautiful relationship between Juventus and Genoa. Look, that's a beautiful strategy. If really you want good Munson, if you really you want that player, you think that that player can give you something in terms of creativity, in terms of being a man that is able to dribble, to score goals, offensive power there, and you want to insert a Barrenechea because you don't believe that he will be the one in your midfield, well, that would be beautiful. And they are thinking about it. Barrenechea to Genoa, a player like Gudmundsson that is valued around 30 million euro, well, you can decrease that price. And that one, I would say, yes, I like. Now... I would prefer what Tuto Sport is telling me today. Look, there is a possibility to go towards two midfielders. And two midfielders, when you're summing up what they are valued, what the clubs are requesting for them, they are still lower than a Cope Manners. We are speaking about Ferguson, we are speaking about Hoiberg, the player from Tottenham, that has one more year of contract with Tottenham, so they can't ask you 50 million euro. The price that they will probably ask are around 20 million euro, but for Ferguson should be a priority. Ferguson, that Bologna is valuing at 20, 25 million euro, so if you're summing up 20 from Hoiberg, 25 from uh, Ferguson, you arrive at a 45 million euro, and 45 million euro, you have two midfielders, a young talent, an experienced one, that are still cheaper than Cope Manners without sacrificing a player like Dean Huysen. I prefer that option. Even if today Cope Manners is stronger than Ferguson, is stronger than Hoiberg. I prefer Cope Manners, for example, than uh, Hoiberg. I don't like that much Hoiberg. Even if I believe that the guy has physicality, can be there in the midfield, especially if I will tell you what can happen with our midfielders are still at Juve in a second. So that, according to me, is a smart one. Also because if you want to go towards Ferguson, well, Bologna is ready to talk about some players that you can put there, like Barbier, Barbieri that is doing really well at Pisa, but also about Nicolussi, Hans Nicolussi Caviglia. And that are two players where you can insert, of course, not with a big amount, but even if you can reach a 10 million euro, a 12 million euro, reducing the price of Ferguson, that would be, according to me, extremely, extremely smart. Why was I telling you that you can go towards two players? And why can Hoiberg be one of the players there? Because we know it, at the moment, we have no final decision of Adrien Rabiot. Adrien Rabiot that will take his decision at the end of the season. If he leaves, you are saving a lot in terms of salary, but you cash in zero euro. You don't cash in. Why? Because it's the end of the contract. So he can decide where he goes for free. I wish, I hope that he stays at Juve and you can only focus on one player, Ferguson, with an additional player that is, for example, Fagioli and looking for another cheap solution to have quantity in that midfield. If not, if not, if Rabiot doesn't extend, you need to find another player with these kind of characteristics. And who are the players? Well, I told you about Koibierg. Another one is Merino from Real Sociedad. That are that kind of Rabiot style of player to put a bit of physicality. Another player that is not sure to stay at Juve, it is Weston McKenney that lifted the trophy yesterday. We said congratulations to him. On the other side, Weston McKenney looks like the first talks to renew his contract. I believe it's ending at 2026 to renew his contract. They are not going that well because he's asking for an increase of salary. Western McKinney is not a player that is earning crazy numbers. I believe he's earning between 2.5 and 3 million euro. And he's coming from a fantastic season. Uh, probably our best and most consistent midfielder this season that I praised all season long. If at the moment I have to say one of the top three players of this season, I would say you without any doubt, Weston McKennie, then we can discuss about position number one, two or three, but without any doubt. On the other side, we are speaking about Weston McKennie that didn't do that well before, that went on loan to Leeds where he totally flopped. It's a player that is doing one beautiful season. I need to see more consistency before going with more, not more years. That I would be open to do but not if you are asking for more salary. 
after one season that is not even ended, after let's say three quarters of a season, I think it's way too early. And if we can't go with the same agreements, just extending one year or two years, and by the way, his contract is ending at 2025, not 2026. Well, it's a player that I would say, okay, we put you on the transfer market after a beautiful season. We can cash in more than what we asked for you one season ago because you showed there is more interest in you. We cash in and we go for other midfielders. That's my opinion. So extending McKenney more than 2025, yes, but at the same conditions, not more. According to me, eh, let me know in the comment section what are the other options that Juventus is also looking because you know it, eh, if you have, a McKenny, a Rabio that not are not 100% sure to stay at Juve. If you have a Fagioli that, yes, will come back, but we no, don't know yet at the moment what level he will be back. Well, we are thinking about changing maybe something. Instead of going only to look for Mezzala, is moving Locatelli to, again, a Mezzala role and looking for some regista. A regista that can be Fagioli, possibly, because he has the qualities to do it, but also looking abroad. A player like Amrabat that was linked to Juve, I believe, one year ago after the World Cup. He was linked to Juve, which he did a fantastic, beautiful work with Morocco. He did a beautiful season with Fiorentina, totally flopped at Manchester United. Look, that's a name that I personally would totally put aside. And then another name is Zubimendi, also another player from Real Sociedad, a player that can play as a regita, can play in a two-man midfield like they showed with Spain. Interesting. Young player, I believe he's 25, 26 years old, if I'm not wrong, let me check, 25 years old. It's a regista that can be there to move Locatelli on the right or on the left, could be an interesting idea, or maybe even playing with two so that you don't have to spend that much. If you play with two midfielders, you have four-man defense, two midfielders, three offensive player, and one striker. Or if you play towards a 4-3-3, while well, having a new regista without Rabiot, without uh, McKenny, you can move and switch Locatelli there on the left or on the right. So, interesting touts. Nothing is defined yet, nothing is sure yet, also because Juventus is waiting for the official qualification to the next Champions League, but interesting touts, like the one of, for example, Calafiori. Calafiori, that is a player that yesterday I told you should be one of the big priorities of Juventus this summer, immediately, because it's a player that can play you in a four-man or in a three-man defense, can play with a Max Allegri can play potentially also with a Thiago Motta, the same as Ferguson that would play in a midfield with Max Allegri, but also especially with Thiago Motta. So these are the players that are really priority, but how can you drop the cash, the initial request? Well, there is a player that Bologna is interested in. After a difficult start of the season, well, Facundo Gonzalez is doing extremely well at Sampdoria. Facundo Gonzalez that we signed, he played, I believe, one game with the next gen, then we loaned out for experience. Bologna is quite alert, they are looking for him. Well, he could potentially enter to go to Bologna, where Juventus go for Calafiori. Interesting, really interesting. These are the things that I personally really like and think are really smart strategy because don't dream eh? qualification to champions league fifa world cup it's not that suddenly you will be extremely rich it's not that you can go and spend everything like the names of cope miners that i personally never really believe that that would be something real if you're looking at 60 million euro forget about it now i believe that juntal is quite happy eh? that the name of cope miners you know is all the front pages because more and more and more we speak about cope miners less and less and less we are speaking about other potential targets and we are going under the radar longer we are able to keep that strategy to be under the radar longer we are able to keep that price lower because if the names are starting in march to be on the front pages you can be you can be sure that 5 10 million euro are added on the player when you go to sign the contract so good strategy if it's right don't do cope manners house and according to me that would be, I think, not, not a smart one. Not a smart one. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about it. If you still have time, if you still have time, look at the beautiful, the beautiful thumbnails on the second channel football that are just beautiful. Really beautiful, not only the thumbnails, but also the videos where I'm speaking about international football. If you want to support the channel, you can. We have now 1,946 subs. Of course, the goal is to reach 2,000, but of course, it depends on you. So if you can, that would be really appreciated. Grazie, forza, you bet.